So can blockchain be a catalyst for development in Africa? Here is our interview with John Longbella. It's going to be a pretty unique show where we're talking to digital entrepreneurs and black entrepreneurs that are actually doing great things. Let it be in the marketing space, let it be in cryptocurrency. And I brought back John Lombella, uh, a good friend of mine who's uh, been playing in that space for quite a while. John Lombella, you know, go, John is the cryptocurrency guru. I call him like that. I'm an entrepreneur myself all the way from South Africa. It is important to always develop new things, right? So ambitiously build new cases beyond just financial services. Yes, we believe in the financial services. I mean, Bitcoin, as a matter of fact, was created as a payment system. It appeared to be a cash electronic system. It all started from there, but it doesn't have to stop there. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another amazing edition of the Really Fun Your Hustle Show. So um, today we decided to bring, remember, first of all, this is Women's Month. So this entire month, until the last Monday of this beautiful month of August, we are going to be hosting one woman who certainly will come on the show to talk to us about some of the amazing things they do whatever they are actually doing. So today I have an amazing guest, an amazing guest, and I can see that she's back online because her connection wasn't too good earlier on, but an amazing guest known as Coach KB. But before, before guys, before we actually go on to this show, um, I felt the need uh, to sort of announce uh, today uh, something that I believe you guys should be aware of, okay? So for most of you guys who follow me, uh, who also have been following me for quite a long time on social media uh, over the last four or five years. Most of you guys do know that I am a fintech entrepreneur and uh, pretty much well immersed into the blockchain space as well as uh, digital currencies. And uh, I'm a blockchain uh, uh, you know, specialist. I'm a cryptocurrency enthusiast. And most importantly, I am a Bitcoin maximalist. But Having said that, I want to mention something really clear. And this is before I, I actually introduce my guest on the show. Remember one thing. If you find yourself on my platform, whether it is on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, or on Twitter, or even on YouTube, you are actually here because you want to learn. You want to learn about what I do. You want to be equipped with the knowledge about entrepreneurship. You want to know more about businesses. I mean. I know it, it is really, really hard to be an entrepreneur, especially a small business. And most importantly, you want to be educated on all things blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies. All right. So I want to mention something, something very clear. I do not, not me and not my team, we do not promote any investment scheme on any one of our platforms. I want you to keep that very clear in your mind. We do not promote any investment scheme or investment opportunity on any one of our platform. If not, we do educate you guys. We give you with enough knowledge. We write about how to avoid being scammed because the reason why I mentioned this, a lot of people have actually created fake profiles using my name and pictures 
multiple profiles on Instagram, on Facebook. You know, I mean, look, it's been going on for a very long time, and 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 I've known it for a very long time. So, but but I'm getting tired of having to report the same thing over and over again. So I plead with you guys, and I beg you, that if you find a fake profile, go out there and report it. And secondly, let me give you actually three tips. First of all, never ever ask for or actually send money to anybody online, okay? Especially not on social media. I don't care whether that's your cousin, your brother, your father, your uncle, your grandfather, your most successful entrepreneur. No, do not send money to anybody on any of the social media platforms, especially if you do not know them, okay? Make sure that you actually engage with people, you seek for advice, and you reach out to those who can certainly give you the best information possible. That's Number one. Number two, make sure, most importantly, that you always do your research. For example, if somebody comes to you clothed in my name and my pictures and comes up to you in a DM and say, hey, you know what? Um, I've got, do you know anything about Bitcoin or do you know anything about cryptocurrencies? And I've got this beautiful investment opportunity. First of all, go out there and do your own research. How do you do that? You go on YouTube, uh, no, no, well, not on YouTube, but you go on, on Google, right? Google is your friend, guys. Go on Google. Make sure that you search, you type the name, John Lombella, or whoever name that is. I don't care, I don't know, I don't know who, right? And make sure that you find out exactly what these people do. Identify, follow the trend, follow exactly what I've been talking about. Make sure that you actually study that particular individual. And only at the end can you make an informed decision to reach out first and decide afterwards if it is something that you want to do. Okay. And make sure that please, guys, this is this is I'm, I'm gonna be talking, talking, you know, all the time about this. My team is gonna be posting, my team manages my social media, guys. I don't always have time to be to be online and or uh, uh, respond to messages, but I thought you know it, it was necessary for me to mention that because some guess what some people are being scammed in Botswana, some people are being scammed in Zimbabwe, some people are using a South African number, they're using a Botswana number, they're using my pictures of my my beautiful daughter, and impersonating me. So please, 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 not only it will not stop, but you need to learn how to identify these scam artists. All right. So anyway, that was a, a little bit of a, an introduction while I wait for our beautiful guest. And remember, guys, it is it is it is uh, 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 the month of August. We are celebrating women. And before I do anything, move forward. I want to bring to you the amazing coach KB. Welcome on the show, dear. Hey, how's it? I'm doing beautiful. I'm doing amazing. I know we had a bit of a technical difficulties earlier on, but you know what? You managed yeah. to get it sorted. And uh, thank you very much for accepting my invitation. Welcome on the Redefine Your Hustle show. Thank you. I see you giving out warnings. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you giving out you. warnings. <laughs> Are people looking for dates with your pictures? <laughs> no. Well, we're going to talk about that, actually. <laughs> People are, looking for dates. People are looking for money. People want to make money in the most horrible way. But look, you know, it, it is, it is, it is, uh, it is sad. But um, I had this this guy or lady, right, from from Zimbabwe today, and it is, it's really heartbreaking. We all know the situation in Zimbabwe. It is really hard, mm. and. You know, you know what the lady or the lady actually mentions to me? There's this guy in South Africa with a South African number, and she gave me plus two seven six three something, right? And you know what they do is they go out there and they use my pictures, my my pictures. It could be with my my daughter or anybody else. They use my pictures on their profile and reaching out to this individual in Zimbabwe. And I think there's a lot of people actually in Zimbabwe since last week. So they've been they've been they've been spamming my my social media pages for them to actually <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's exactly what happened. And when I spoke to the lady, she says, "Oh, you know what? Um, you know the situation in Zimbabwe. It's really hard, and we're trying to find ways for us to make money and so forth." And this person mentioned to us that you are John Lombella, and they actually went on YouTube on my YouTube channel. 
they sent them a video that I recorded probably about two or three weeks ago with a gentleman from the US, Dr. A.D. Connor. Now, and I'm actually to the lady, but hold on a second. But this Dr. A.D. Connor is not even in Bitcoin. I mean, really, we had a, a conversation on something else. Not only that, <laughs> and, and they sent that video to, to kind of paint a picture about the kind of person I am and what I talk about. And they sent a video advertising an investment opportunity on Bitcoin. How cunning is that, really? And this is what really, truly happens to the people around the world. But anyway, enough talking about me. This is about you. This is your show. This is you being on this show because I want my audience to actually understand exactly who you are. We're going to be talking about entrepreneurship and social dating. How do we mingle with the two? All right? And, and I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. presenting here, Coach KB, also known as, well, actually known as Makabela Motang, but she goes by the name of Coach KB. And she is a social and dating coach. Wow, that's amazing. Please mm. talk to the audience exactly about who you are. And by the way, as you join on the show, please give, give us some love, give us some heart. Tell us exactly where you are connecting from. Are you connecting from Ghana, Nigeria, <laughs> Singapore, the US, uh, the DRC, Congo, Angola, Botswana, Zimbabwe? Tell us where you're coming from. We want to know exactly who you are. And maybe, who knows, if you have a relationship issue, I would make sure that I get you one special slot with Coach KB so she can actually talk to you, whether it is on Zoom or anything else. But Coach KB, please go on. You are my guest today. This is your show. Who you are. Talk to us. Yeah, so you. like you've said, uh, my full name is... Yeah, like you said, my full name is Makabelo Mataung. I go by the name of Coach KB. And I'm a social and dating coach. Um, and what does that mean? Uh, well, it means a lot of things. <laughs> but basically, I my goal is to create life and social growth um, through transformational coaching workshop and social events and speaking as well, you know. I see we've got people there that are joining you all the way from Zim. Somebody else is from Josie. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah so that's what I do. I, I, I'm a, a, yeah. yeah, that's what I do. I'm a, a social and dating coach, amongst other things that I do. I oh. basically am a activist for relationships and dating. You know, there's a, there's a way we can make this fun again. There's a way we can get this right again. I know a lot of us have given up on on the idea of relationships a lot of us have given up on the idea of dating because it seems like it's such an extreme sport you know one minute you're out of the dating game maybe you were married and then now you find yourself single getting back in the dating game is oh my word it's another story it's like you came back from to another completely different planet you know <laughs> things change rules change how do we get it right how do we navigate this and you know how do I attract the people that I want? How do I get them to stay in a relationship with me? How do I get myself to be attractive? How do I get mm. myself to be noticed? How do I get myself, you know, my dream girl? How do I get, my, you know, it's all these things. And funny enough, whatever teachings I do teach on, on um, dating, I find that they somehow link to the corporate, for example. Um, they also link to your um, social life. They also link to your business as well. And we'll go through some of these things that I see right. um, integrating so well with with either than your social or relationship specifically and how they integrate with every other aspect of your life, you know? Right, right. Okay, beautiful. Look, to, today, this is what I love to do, right? So this show for me called the Redefine Your Hustle Show is really an interactive show. So, but who makes it interactive? Yeah. My guests do and the audience as well. So as to the audience, I always encourage them to make sure they engage with you. Um, some of them may have yeah. personal questions. Some of them may have questions they want to clear out, or they may have uh, gone through you know, relationship issues and uh, they're trying to bounce back. Uh, some of them may have been married before and divorced, or some of them are trying to get back on a bandwagon. And you mentioned a key word earlier on. Uh, you mentioned that we need to be able to re-identify the rules. Is there anything as rules when it comes to dating at all? I think it depends what stage you're in. Look, if you're in, in your 20s, dating is, you still have the energy for it. You know, you still have, right. you still have the resilience for it. You still can get hurt and bounce back quickly. You know, you, you, you date with no goal, uh, no end goal in mind, you know. Um, and so 
it depends on what stage you're in in your life. You know, I think for me, where it gets complicated um, or where it gets a bit tricky is if you've got everything else in your life worked out. You now have your ideal job, you have your home, you have everything else working so well for you, cooperating right. and everything else, but your personal life is still is in still. You know, I think we tend to think we, we tend to put our lives, our social lives and our dating lives on on the back front while we focus yes. on survival issues, which makes sense, you know, we, we focus on security, we focus on finances, and once we get that right, then we wanna um now look at okay, what makes us happy? I need somebody else to share this with, you know? But I think that's where we get it wrong. You can actually do this. You know, It's there's a lot of stats and surveys that were done to show how having a great partner can actually make you achieve more than you would on your right. own, you know? Yeah. But I think we just taught to just say, let me get this, let me get this. Before you know it, you're 35, you're single, you haven't dated for 10 years. You know, I've had clients like this where they say, I haven't gone on a date for four years. I'm like, oh, okay, so were you in a relationship? No, I've been single for four years, but I haven't been dating. And why? I'm so busy. I'm so... Another thing is that right. we make excuses about why um, dating is... Our dating lives are the way that they are, you know? Um, I've seen a lot of women, very independent women, doctors are some of my clients, you know, and very well-established um, women who are doing well corporately. Mm. I've seen them, how they take on the corporate mm -hmm. leather. I've seen how, you know, somebody can say, oh, I once started in this company as an administrator. Now I'm an exec and whatever, you know, the passion they have, the proactiveness that they have. But when it comes to dating, we don't do that. You know, you're scared to even approach the girl or the guy that you like because you, right. you don't have the confidence that it takes. You suddenly shy away from it, you know? You suddenly shy away from that. You suddenly don't have the self-esteem. You suddenly have all these issues, all these negative things that surround you. And you're like, but I'm, I'm a doctor, what's happening to me? I'm a lawyer, I can right. do this. <laughs> but this right. is what right. where if you don't have the right tools and the right techniques and the right approaches, you can really find yourself stranded and almost settling for anything, you know? You know, it's a very interesting topic. And of course, you know, I'm going to ask you exactly about your journey and how you became a, a social coach and dating coach, right? Uh, but before I do so, I just want to remind the audience, once again, this is an interactive conversation. If you have any questions for Coach KB, uh, specific to this, to this very interesting topic, please uh, get your questions ready and engage with her. Ask the questions. She will be able to respond live on this show. And also, I want you to share, please. Give us some love. Give her some love. Yeah, what, what's life. been your experience of dating? <laughs> what's been your experience, guys? <laughs> How are you? Where are you in this equation? What phase are you in in your relationship and dating aspect? Where are you, you know? And, and who knows? I might just pick uh, somebody randomly or my team will. Uh, depending on who shares uh, the most of this uh, this life, so that you can have a one-on-one -on -one dating conversation or social coaching conversation with uh, Coach KB, and I'm going to make sure that all the costs are taken care of. As we normally do every single Monday, we kind of give uh, a gift to our audience. By the way, so uh, the one thing that I want I want uh, I want to ask you is talk to me through about your journey to becoming a social <laughs> and dating coach. Keeping in mind that yeah. we had a conversation before this 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 live, you have a yeah. nice You are yeah, a so journalist by profession. So please yeah. how you know from IT to coaching. How I got gotcha. you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I let me tell you, I never even knew there was a dating coach in my life before before I became one, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, like you said, like you said, I I have a background in IT. I specialize in IT. I was a business analyst before this. Um, right. So I was doing okay. You know, I was doing okay in that area of my life. Here I was, a 20-something year old who has done well for herself. I have my home. I have my, you know, I have this. And then um, I found myself stranded. I found my love life showing me flames, guys. Eh? <laughs> and I wanted to know what... What is wrong? What is it that I did? You know, uh, and so I went on a search to find experts, and you know, in 
all this field to help me out with my dating life. You know, I saw seduction expert who taught me how to flirt, how to charm, how to do seduction. I went on to a life coach who transformed my life. I went on to a woman, um, she calls herself a woman liberator. You know, I went on to do her a course for seven months in where I worked on my issues and myself. So I've, I've invested a lot of time, probably two years of my life, investing, researching on on how I relationship and, you know, taking it as far back as how I grew up, how it relates to men, how is it that it's affecting my decisions in relationship and my decisions in partners. So it was never something that I set out to do, you know, but here I am finding half of my day spent doing relationship coaching, you know. Right. Yeah, and so, so that's, how, that's how I got here. I, I never, it was because I was extremely doing terribly well, bad. You know, um, my life life was horrible to say the least. I find a guy that I like today, and then three days from now he's ghosted me. He doesn't call me back. And I'm like, what happened? The date was so nice. You know, you were complimenting me. Oh, you would just spend a night with the guy, and then boom, he's gone. Like, why? What did I do? Is it my breath? What? What? What is it? What was it? <laughs> And you start making all these excuses in your head about why it's not working. The problem is you, the issue is you, you know? And so I find that we often change things about ourselves when we're at our lowest moments, you know? We often make decisions, life-changing decisions. And I remember deciding I'll never, ever, ever find myself unhappy again, no matter what relationship status I'm in, whether I'm dumped, whether I'm the dumpy, whether I'm in a relationship, whether I'm single, I constantly want to be happy um, and I want to take charge of that, you know. And this is the same thing that we do in terms of businesses. You start a business now, two years of it, you, you won't even know what's your same name, you know. <laughs> Things will go from horrible to horrible art to, hor to horrific to, you know. <laughs> right. And you're asking yourself, it was supposed to be so easy. They just say, register your business, do a website, find a business card. You have all of those. Now, why is the money not coming in? You know, why yeah. am I not getting clients? What's wrong? Right. And this is what happens in dating. You'd be like, okay, I've, I've got my manners on point. I've got my body on point. I, I know how to look. I know how to sound. Now I'm waiting for the boys or the men. Where are they? <laughs> and then they're not coming, you know? And so you need to be patient with this process. You know, those who've gone through this process will explain to you how it works. You don't just sit and say, I've, I've got the business card in the website. Therefore, I'm just going to sit. No, you have to go and hustle. You have to put yourself out there. You have to talk about your business. You have to be, you have to network. You have, and this is exactly what you need to do with dating as well. You have to put yourself out there. It's just not enough to look pretty. It's just not enough to put uh, your profile on Tinder. It's just not enough. You need to put yourself out there with the people that, that are going to be beneficial for you, you know? <laughs> wow. With the people that you see yourself dating, you know, you need to put yourself out, network. You don't just network with a random stranger who can't even add value to you, who's selling coal. Meanwhile, you are uh, doing something differently, different, you know? So you want to associate yourself with the type of people that you see adding value to your business. So it's the same yeah. thing. You want to associate yourself with people who are going to add value to the type of woman or man that you see yourself being in the future. You know, if I've decided I only want to date this caliber of man and and then now I'm just randomly accepting any guy who's a petrol attendant saying hi, I'm like, hi, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. So you need to be brave. You need to, it, it, you need to be brave. You need to put yourself out there. You need to work on your self-esteem. You cannot fake your way through networking. You cannot fake your, your way through business etiquette. You cannot fake your way through marketing or, 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 or you know, your business, for example, you know, so you need to be, you need to know your story, but you also need to be able to put yourself out there and tell your story, you know, passionately, tell it, you know. And so another thing is that a person would be like, so what do I say when I'm on a date and he says, tell me about yourself? I'm like, this is, this is a standard thing that you have to know. Whether a person is asking you about your business, whether a person is asking you about what you do, whether a person is asking you if you're single or not, you need to be able to have answers from the tip of your tongue about yourself you know you've introduced yourself very well when you were introducing yourself in your your segment um you know about what you do you expect to i told you yeah. i told you earlier on this afternoon that that you know we have an amazing surprise guest right and i didn't tell you the name of the guest and um uh -huh. uh, this is something that i've decided to do this month 
or occasionally as well. But um, I like to spice things up. And this next guest is a, a good friend of mine. Uh, I've known her for a very long time, uh, actually for the last 18 years. And she knows I like to poke things around. She knows I like to provoke her. And uh, But you are, as a coach, you know, um, I want the, the reason why I'm bringing her on the show, and by the way, my team didn't know that I was actually going to bring a surprise guest on the show. But the reason why I'm bringing her on the show is uh, I'm going to be asking some tricky questions, and I want the both of you to kind of synchronize, and, and you give me your answer from, a, you know, an expertise, because you are an expert. You have developed this to become an expert, and you've mentioned to me that this is your passion, your true passion, as much as you, you still do freelancing and you run your consulting uh, practicing uh, as an IT uh, professional, but you see yourself moving more towards speaking to the audience, helping people because you couldn't find these things as easy as possible. And now you want to be known as somebody who could be like a one-stop uh, 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 shop uh, to address issues re regarding to relationships, right? So I'm gonna bring uh, my beautiful friend, and her name is Aisha Sidibe. And as I'm bringing her on, please, guys, give us some love and make sure that you share this live. If you're watching on your Facebook, make sure that you actually add a watch uh, 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 party so that your friends can come on to the show. So welcome, Aisha. How are you doing today? <laughs> Good evening, John. Good evening, Cabello. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Aisha. She's beautiful. <laughs> she is, right? Thank you. So are you. Yeah. And I know she's going to kill me, but that's okay. You can kill me tomorrow or Saturday. That's <laughs> fine. You know, only if you invite me for that little party right there, but uh, you, you can do that. Uh, you, you know me. Come on. You know me by now. I, I like to create these occasions. Which and, is why uh, I'm terrified so to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I know you are terrified, and I can Thanks see and read it through your eyes. But you know what? <laughs> That's the whole reason. Being terrified live on the show, so we can actually have an expert to kind of talk through exactly when it comes to relationships. Okay. Now, and and you know specifically what I'm talking about relationships. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, this is what I want you to do. Wh wh why don't you talk to the audience very briefly about who you are, what you do. And maybe your little credentials as well. So what can you tell the audience? Um, wow, where do I start? I'm a mother of a 19-year-old. Um, I've been in the commodity trade and logistics industry for the last 12 years. Um, I have an MBA and a degree in a bachelor's in commerce, majoring in accounting and finance. So, But I've chosen to do anything but accounting, um, as I find accounting very, very boring. I also work in events as well. I enjoy doing events and yeah, socializing. That's pretty much me. The one thing that I want to add is Aisha, just like me, uh, <laughs> love that opulent lifestyle, right? And the one thing, talking about events, she had a company called Opulent Occasion. And I, and I thought that was a brilliant thing because um, what, what she did back in the days was to really represent the things she loved as an individual, but also as an aspiring entrepreneur, okay, uh, to talk exactly about the things she's doing and all that kind of stuff. But I also know that, you know, she's more into this whole life uh, coaching and, and trying to figure out exactly relationships and all that kind of stuff. So by the way, I've been coaching her as well. So that's the reason why I have her here. And I know she's a mother and aspiring entrepreneur and a life coach. But you know what? The one question that I want to ask you guys is, uh, especially uh, yourself, uh, Coach KB, is what is the difference between social coaching, or social, yeah, social coach and a dating coach? So with social coaching, what I mainly uh, deal with is social behaviors, social dynamics. For example, I do a lot of work around etiquette training. Um, obviously, this is how you handle yourself in any social event, whether it's work-related, personal-related. Um, and so forth. So it's got a lot to do with social dynamics and dating has a lot to do with our intimate parts, uh, our relationships, our one-on-one -on -one, um, relationships, how we relate to the partners that we choose to partner up with um, or for marriage, for dating, for relationship or for whatever really. Um, sometimes it's just sexual, you know, people are adults out there and they do what they do. 
By the way, Aisha, I'm surprised you say you have a 19 year old. Did you have this child when you were like two years old? <laughs> I was about <I> 19. <laughs> <laughs> because you don't look a day over 25, I tell you. Thank you. I, I think thank Aisha, you. Aisha drank the pill of not aging. Uh, so she I did see that. that. In, I want that yeah. pill. I remember she did that in, in 2002 when we first met. And that was before she actually flew down to, to Australia. So she decided to be on an anti-aging uh, mode. Uh, but you know what, uh, Coach, Kip, well, before I actually uh, ask you, Coach, Aisha, I want to ask you a, a question, right? So uh, what, what do you think a relationship means to you? And I'm talking about a, a a partner relationship, right? Somebody you're dating. So what, what what does that mean to you as an individual and why is it important to you? Um, so for me, a relationship um, in summary is having someone to share your life with, share your goals, your dreams, your passions with, um, someone to grow with. Um, because I believe if you find the right partner, they encourage you, help you. Um, to be a better you, help you with your goals and dreams, support you, and vice versa. So for me, it's not about finding myself or finding happiness. You need to first be happy, love yourself, and then find a partner that complements that and helps you be a better you, basically. That, for me, is what it is in a nutshell. I'm going to ask you another question, a follow-up question on that, Aisha, and I know I probably have never asked you this question before. My okay. mother uh, had me, she was 18 years old, and... Um, um, and I remember when, when I was 18, uh, people actually um, thought that I was actually her brother, right? Yeah. And, and today, when you look at my mom, she's, she's still very young, and yet she's about 50, I think 50, I don't know, 58 or 59 or 57, I'm not sure I can remember. Uh, no, she's turning actually 59 years old this year. So the, the one question I want to ask you specifically, and, and, and you, 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 you get your child at 19 year old, were you married at that time? Uh, uh, did you get married before, because you had a child or the child was on the way? Uh, or or what, what, what's happening? Or is it, is it something cultural uh, from Zambia? Because, you know, he's from Zambia. And uh, that actually led you to being with your partner. Wow, you dived right in, huh? <laughs> You're going to kill me tomorrow, that's fine. I, I, I will, I, I, I promise you. you. Um, okay, so no, I wasn't married when I had my son, um, but I did get married about six months into him being born, and you could say it was culturally expected. Um, yeah, it was, it was kind of the expectation. When you have a child out of wedlock, the norm is that you get married. Um, to that person. So that's the reason why. I'm would you ask say, you, Aisha, I was, I was go, about go to on, ask go. Aisha a question. Sorry. Yeah. Aisha, would you say your experiences, I, I assume you're not married now? No, I'm not. We're divorced, yeah. So would you say that dating for you then, this is dating for you now after divorce, is there a difference in how you um, navigate yourself in terms of dating really. before? Not really. Not really, actually. I found myself a lot of the time um, looking back to when I was younger because I didn't date that much before I had my son either. Um, mm -hmm. I was very picky about who I dated back then, and that hasn't changed. I'm still very selective, which is probably why it takes so long for me to actually <laughs> get myself into a relationship. I can say, I can attest to that. I can attest <laughs> to that. But carry on, Aisha. <laughs> Yeah, no, so I don't think much has changed, but I have noticed that the dating game is a lot different in the sense that I find people are more relaxed. They're more, there isn't much effort into going into courting and dating today. There's no chivalry. It's like it's completely gone out the window. You know, you don't get flowers. You don't get a guy trying hard enough to get you to go on a first date. It's kind of like they have so many options and so many social media platforms that if they ask you and you're not interested, boom, fine, on to the next, you know? There isn't mm. that extra effort from a guy today. But I get that. But would you also say that ladies are more expectant now than they were before, probably 10 years ago? I think Definitely. we also put ourselves in that light where we, we are so expectant, like we've got high expectations 
And that's because probably now we're not just dating for the fun of it, for the food, for the nice food. We can afford to buy ourselves these nice food on a date now, you know? (laughs) You're no longer going on a date just because, oh, well, I'm bored and there's nice food. (laughs) But I think that our expectations for men have somehow doubled. Um, I've had a lot of conversation with men and from my conversation with them, it's almost like they just expected to have this huge checklist they just expected to be everything they just expected to be the providers they just expected to have their life together whereas it's okay for us to make mistakes about our lives and not have it figured out would you say that's been your experience if you compare um the males in your life or the 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 males that you've observed would you say that we are also being unreasonable in our expectations of men now because of where we find ourselves economically as women um, the conversations I've had with majority of my male friends is more in line with they're expected to to spend a lot more money. Um, there is no 50-50, which I also have an issue with, but we'll, we can have that conversation another day. But they're expected to pay for everything. They feel like women are just seeking out financial benefit from them. So even when you do get guys who still want to take you out on the date, still want to um, be romantic and, and romance you, um, they feel that the women have this whole list of requirements. And for them, they feel, why should I pay for all your expenses? Why should I pay for everything that one, either you're not paying for or you are, but all of a sudden when I come into your life, you're expecting me to take that over. Yeah, I just think it's even beyond money for me. I just think it's the expectation of men must have it figured out, you know. What do you think? (laughs) What's been your experience? I haven't haven't really had that, not with my circle. Um, Yeah, I can't, no. (laughs) You know what, guys, this this is a beautiful I actually want to hear from our host, what's been your experience? (laughs) You also have the experience, yeah, I'm sure. What's been your experience? (laughs) As a man, would you say that you you are expected to have to have it figured out your life? You expected to to have your apartment. You expected to drive a car. You expected to have a, a, a booming career. You expected to look the part, look sexy, have the six pack. You know, give us six <laughs> orgasms in one round. You expected to. Is the expectation realistic um, that we have for men, guys? My, I'm supposed to be the, the host and I'm being asked question on my show, but this is a beautiful show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Coach KB. But listen, uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys whereby I would say I, 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 I disagree earlier on with what Aisha has mentioned uh, because I don't put all men in that basket. Uh, however, and if I look into one of the comments from uh, Veronica, where she says that dating in the fourth industrial revolution has completely changed, it is true. We live in a world of social media, of Snapchat, of, tin- of Tinder, of uh, Badu, and uh, uh, Snapchat, and Instagram, and Facebook, and so forth. Um, but to answer your question directly, Coach, um, I am a different individual, and I believe that I've had clear vision from the moment I was 11 years old. Right now, I'm not saying clear vision at 11 for being married. No, but I mean, I have consistently seen a certain uh, uh, everything that I wanted to accomplish in my life. And I've, I've first of all decided in my head and eventually as I progressed, I declared those words in my life and they actually came through. Now, I was 19 years old when I was working at the United Nations. I was a very young in the, uh, 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 um, actually employee for the, entire, for the entire mission back home. Two years later, I decided I want to quit to me to further my education. A lot of people thought I was crazy. My, my, my best friend actually has been there since, since he, has, he has never left, right? 19 years old, uh, 19, 19 years working for the same company, but I decided two years later to quit and to come to South Africa. I did come in South Africa. First of all, for me to focus on my studies, right? Yes, the dating game happened before I actually even started doing my, uh, 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 my school. Now, guess what? Even during the dating game, I told myself, before I start school, it's okay, I can go out there and date. But I remember very clearly, 
when I started school, I gave myself another goal. I told myself, first of all, I've never gone to a university where I study in English, okay? Although I spoke English very clearly, I told myself for about one year, one year, I do not want to date at all. I can have friends or whatever, but I do not want to date. Why? Because I want to make sure I master the university system in South Africa, that I actually engage with my goals because I came here to study, right? That was my primary goal. And I want to make sure that I actually see myself through in that journey. Three months down the line, I mastered the university and I was like, wow, you know, this is so easy. And I kind of relaxed my own rules. Now, I started dating. Yes, as a student and so forth, that's okay. I didn't have a lot of money and so forth. But it was not about, uh, about the fact that, you know what, men are, the, probably the time then was a little different, that men are here to be able to pay and all that kind of stuff. No, for me it was, okay, I like you, we like each other, that's okay. Uh, only God knows if uh, he will plant in me the desire for me to either get married to that individual. And guess what? Three years later, I made another de decision. And I told myself, I want to be married to a lady that comes from my nationality. Now, I didn't know at that time, I didn't, I didn't have anybody in my environment at that time, but I had already met somebody three years before that I actually saw, I remembered and I said, wow, that's the person I want to actually engage with, with the potential for me to go into a relationship with her, do the dating part, the dating game, and figure out if that's okay, if this is going to work. But you see, I had a goal in every single one of my journey, I set myself a goal. Guess what? That person is my wife today. Now, so basically, you, you have no date life. <laughs> That's what you're I saying. Have you have no date. No date. No date. Yes. I did. I did. You're, date. you're one of those oh. people that get married to the people they went to standard one with or grade one with or what? <laughs> listen, listen. You, you haven't know lived. You don't know. You don't know how hard it gets. With you. I disagree with Aisha, but but I am pretty. Sure, I, I do realize today that the dating has completely changed, right? Um, when when people talk to me and, and I mention to them, okay, when they ask me the question, how long have you been married? Look, I've been married 15 years. And they're like, wow, first of all, you look young. And 15 years, you were too young to make that decision, right? But let, that was a conviction within me already. And God had planted in me the desire to be married. And I, need, I knew already I needed that partner. And in every single you time, you escaped this bullet. You just escaped it. So, <laughs> so you're useless in this conversation. Basically, I should ask somebody else. Let me ask your audiences, the male audience. Audience, male guys, guys please post, post comments. Post comments over there on the show. They there's actually a, a they comment here on. from. There's actually a comment here from Marume who says that dating is another job and a big challenge, especially when you are on the path of being a business person. Look, starting out, especially if you're starting out business, for me, I feel like there's a lot that you're going to go through. Like I said, two years of me starting a business was crippling, you know. I found myself having no money, no confidence, no, you know, all of that. And for you to have a partner who's not understanding, who's not going to be understanding of those seasons, who, who doesn't see the bigger picture, I can only imagine as a man what that does to you. So a lot of men put that aside and say, let me focus on the business. Because what I tend to see is that no man wants to date when their life is not in order. For us women, we can date even when we're unemployed, we can still date. But for a man to not have anything going for himself, it becomes impossible to almost even think of the idea of a relationship. I agree. You know, um, so so it's unfair in that stance, um, which is why I wanted to hear what men have to say about their experiences here, you know. Man, guys, please, please Yeah, you, you escaped so this. You, you had a free ticket out of I this think, misery. <laughs> I think it's no, I didn't have no free ticket. For men, guess what? No, no, I didn't have a free ticket. <laughs> So, say that again, Aisha, what is it? I was saying, I think it's a natural instinct for men to be a provider. So if they don't have True. all their, 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 their stuff in order, they don't feel complete yeah. enough to be responsible for another person. I agree. I, to that, definitely, I, I totally agree. But I want to move on uh, really quickly, uh, 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 Coach KB. Look, as a coach, you certainly develop strategies, techniques, and so forth, right? Is there anything, anything as a technique that you get to apply today? And I, and I do believe that, that either of you 
including Aisha, certainly has a technique. For example, for her, one of the reasons is she does not just date anybody, right? So she's already put herself on a certain pedestal. And if she meets somebody, she or he, I mean, he has to, to be in that standard, right? So can you guys, can you both talk to us a little bit about these techniques? What do people need to look out for? And we are going to bring all of this from an, you know, into an entrepreneurial perspective. Remember, this is an entrepreneur show. Redefine your hustle. But please tell me, educate me. Come on. Look, John, it's so easy to say I want a job with a, with an office view where I earn one million a month. Um, but if you don't get down to the details of how you want to feel around this job, how you want to wake up and come to this job, what mood you want to be in, what feeling, how do you, do you want to feel supported? Do you want to feel like you can grow? Do you want to feel like, you know, if you don't have a clear picture of those, unfortunately, you'll always find yourself in a job, whether you like it or not, whether it, it grows you or not, you'll always find yourself in a job for the sake of being in a job, you know? And this is the same thing for me with dating, where if you're not clear about what you want, you'll find yourself with a long checklist that consists of, he must work, he must end this, he must have his MBA, he must, but never consisting of the true essence of what a relationship, companionship, I want, I want, to, I want it to feel easy. I want it to, I want to feel loved. I want to feel supported. We often don't focus on the feelings, which is what matters in the end when you're in a relationship. Not that he's got an MBA, not that he drives this car. Those things don't matter, especially the older you get. So for me, I just think that take dating dating as you come. It depends on what age you're in. In your 20s, you, you still don't have an idea of what you want. So chances are your checklist will be more physical, more materialistic. You know, In your 30s, you tend to relax more a bit because you started to understand that in life you need companionship, you need somebody who understands and supports. In your 40s, you understand it extremely different as well, you know. So depending on where you are, um, I'd say the checklist is okay, but be careful about it. Don't focus too much on it that you forget the feeling you want to walk away with. You, you forget the end goal that you want to walk away with. What feeling do you want to be, to yeah. have in your relationship yeah. The kind of person that you want to come out of this relationship is what I hope to be in this relationship, you know, focus on that. And so for me, that's the one um, tip that I can give everybody out there is that it's okay to have the checklist. It's okay to have the high standards. But if you are just going to have high standards without any thought mm. into it, any thought process, you'll just find yourself in a relationship for the sake of a relationship, but that's not true. a fulfilling yeah. relationship, you know? Aisha, do, do you want to say something on that? Do you want to chime in and, no, and talk I, about, I have you developed the strategy technique? No, I agree with her 100%. You know, like she said, while, whilst you might have high standards, it's important to know who and what you are and also what you're able to give in a relationship, yeah. not just what you want to receive. Got you, got you. I want to ask a question with regards to the next step of a relationship, right? So some people get together uh, and, and, and they believe well, there are certain expectations, especially ladies. There are certain expectations, and uh, they probably say, "Hey, you know what? Look, if, if you if you have been in a relationship for about two years, and so forth, or three, four, five, uh, the next level is marriage. So, I want to ask you a question, ladies: Is marriage the preferred or the ultimate destination for people, especially those who are in couple? Look, I tend to think, <clears throat> you know, this is interesting because I tend to think that the nationality that you come from dictates a lot in terms of how you date. For example, I've seen a lot of African men, let me say, are more versus South African men, for example. African men are more family orientated. They're more, you know, they'd never make a baby and not be there as the father. You know, they'd never... Um, not that they'd never, but chances of that happening are very, <laughs> let me let me be clear about this. <laughs> um, it's not that they've never, but what I find is that how South African men date versus, for example, how a, a Nigerian man would date would be completely different because their values are completely different, you know? So I just find that where you come from influences what your dating goal is. Some people just hear some people just want to date for the fun of it because for the next two years, well, I don't have anything to keep me busy. So I'm just going to date, you know, for the sake of dating. Somebody else is saying, well, I actually want to have a family now. So I'm dating for that. Or somebody else would say, no, I just actually want to date because I'm lonely or I'm just waiting for my sweetheart to come back from, 
his job overseas or whatever you know so it depends on where your values are but it's okay whatever you're dating for it's okay don't let anybody say rush you into making a commitment out of your dating life it's okay you know if you just want to date because you're trying to figure yourself out that's okay too you know that's okay if you're just dating because well i'm bored it's okay you know so i think be okay with whatever goal you're dating for the end goal is not always right. marriage don't be pressured into thinking that you have to get married that's the purpose of dating no the purpose of dating is to figure out who your best com- mm. who's, who's, who are you best compatible with but mm. also to see there's no way else where we learn about ourselves than in relationships you know there's such mirrors that if you deny yourself the experiences of dating you deny yourself the experiences of growing as a person you know so what better way to grow date guys eh? i encourage you go out there and date <laughs> aisha aisha chime in there please is marriage the ultimate destination for you not in my opinion but i think it's all dependent on where you are in life and what experiences right. you've had so if you've been married in the past you're probably not looking to get married just yet you're probably looking to date for fun or just to have companionship it's, it's all right. dependent if you've got kids sometimes you don't want to date or get married you just want to have someone to go on dates with or just go to right. the movies with not necessarily have a relationship it's it's all very dependent on the stage you're at um i don't believe dating or marriage is the end goal but i also don't believe in dating for too long you if know there's, you are there's not on the same wavelength sure because yeah. i find a lot of people go into a relationship and you both have different expectations and then after yeah. a while it starts to clash because right. we don't yeah, have true. those conversations which which kind of brings me to a question i think that there's there's somebody on my private page uh, my team just sent me a question uh, one of his comment right uh his name is olivier olivier belewete uh so i hope i pronounce your name well olivier belewete uh so he's he's mentioned something about cultural barriers do you think, and I suppose Coach KB, you mentioned it earlier, right? Do you think yeah, that mm-hmm. cultural, uh, uh, the culture and where we come from has an influence in today's modern world? Has an yeah. influence of the kind of couple we become or individual we uh, we are and how we influence the relationship in a certain way, good or bad? W- would you say that? I would definitely say that. I mean, especially now with women taking over uh, economically, you find they don't need necessarily men to pay on a date. Like I'm okay with going on a first date and saying, no, John, I'll pay this time. But if you come from a certain background where a man is defined by his ability to provide, that would not sit well with you. In fact, that would be the last time I see you. And I'd wonder why, you know, <laughs> and I'd wondered why. So there's thin lines, be- thin line between how a man feels respected culturally, depending on where he comes from, but also how a woman carries herself as well. Um, because for, for me, um, I've had one or two clients who said that a woman who who did not um, give the man a chance to speak about himself, that was always about herself and whatever was just a clear indication that she was not ready for partnership um, and whatever else. So I, I definitely think that cultural comp- compatibility plays a role. But however, that does not mean that you cannot date somebody from a different um, background. Like I believe that everything can be communicated, especially if you're a great communicator, there's nothing that you cannot resolve in your relationship or equalize for that matter in your relationship with great communication. And somebody else is asking, is Coach KB single? Uh, <laughs> how is her love life now? <laughs> Can I tell you, this no, is just a no, This is a dating show today. <laughs> I, as I was explaining, you know, I was, uh, you know, I was moving here. You know, I had my thoughts in process, and I'm like, okay, I'm flowing, and then somebody boom, I'm like, thanks. I can imagine. <laughs> good one. Do you go to a doctor, Tabang, because they are good at what they do, or do you go to a doctor because <laughs> you want to see if they've cured themselves? Do you go to a doctor and say, can I have <clears throat> evidence of your, your, can you cure yourself first? And then, <laughs> I don't know if you're asking this from a personal point of view, if you want to date me no, or you no, ask me. <laughs> you, you coach, because you never know. Listen, earlier on, you mentioned something about networking, right? Who knows? Yeah. 
They could be in my audience. They're good networking right there, man. Come no, on. that's why I'm saying because Tabang is coupled up. From what I can see in the profile picture, there's a nice yellow lady there. So Tabang, yes. I don't know why you're asking this question. <laughs> no, he's asking for other people. Well, other people can ask for themselves, Tabang, but so I think you are so good. Friend. Maybe he has a friend who's not watching, so he wants I to think, know whether I think Tabang is sorted. <laughs> <laughs> But listen, guys, this is beautiful, and and I wanna. Uh, th this is this is something that I wanna mention, right? So, dating coaching <clears throat> has often been stigmatized, right? Now, is teaching romance demeaning or unethical? Some people think that hey, you know what, you can't really teach people how to love and all that kind of stuff. But yet, other people really do need advice when it comes to love or relationships. Look, look, What's your thought on that? Yeah, look, we're teaching people how to apply makeup, how to do their eyebrows. We've never had those jobs before, you know. We're teaching people personal trainers. We've never had those roles before. So as the world evolves, there are more and more people that need assistance in different areas of their lives. You know, somebody needs to be taught how to eat healthy. Somebody needs to be taught how to do hair. Somebody. These are things that we never actually had a need of of going to school for or being taught. But now as the world evolves, the world requires people to be specialist in different areas that we never even saw as as, as, as areas of need, for example, you know? So, uh, I mean, the world is expanding, guys. 10 years from now, there's gonna be another role that we didn't even think would be existing, you know? I mean, did you ever think that um, would have machine service beggars at McDonald's? Did you ever think you know, we didn't think of those things. So the world is evolving. Be open-minded to to people specializing in different areas, and and yeah, I think for me that's it's, it's not. There's nothing stigmatizing about that, but it's just that you would also for a certain help if you're seeking help in a certain area, you you'd rather go to a person who specializes in that instead of going, for example, to a preacher. We, we knew preachers as people who, who fed our spirits, but also as people mm. who, who we had to involve in our sexual lives and our but now we have intimacy coaches, you know, who specialize in just intimacy for, for couples. And the poor pastors don't have to be subjected to making teaching you about the Bible, then teaching you about sex, then teaching you how to date this person, then you know, because they had to do it all. And it was not their areas of specialties, for example, in the past. But poor pastors had to be counselors, had to be social workers, had to be, you know, and it was all draining for them, I can imagine. So now that we have people who specialize in assisting us in areas that we need, I think it makes work so much easier for those um, that I agree. need assistance, you know? I agree, right? And, and, and I think the world the world we live in today has, has really, you know, advanced technology, the modern world, that a lot of people are just developing new ways and so forth. But hey, the, the, the geez, this beautiful comments, guys. We, we know we're supposed, to, we know we're supposed to, to stop like in one hour, but I'm going to extend for another 10 minutes because I have some nugget question for you guys, uh, wrapping question that I do believe is uh, are going to help uh, the, the audience uh, and so forth. So I just want to bring up this uh, comment from Veronica. Uh, she says that Aisha can attest that Zambians are excellent in, <laughs> in teaching all marriage relationship romance traditionally very bold in many African cultures. All right, so Veronica, are you saying that they're better than Congolese people? Come on, but listen, Aisha. <laughs> listen, Aisha. Have you have you personally had the desire to actually meet um, a, a a relationship expert of some sort? Or, or a coach of some sort, life coach and things like that? Have you, have you had that before? Life and if so, why? Life coach, definitely, because I always feel there's a reason to improve on oneself. Like I'm always searching to better myself all around. So life coach has always interested me. I have spoken to people, um, behavioral uh, scientists who kind of analyze your personality, your traits, and kind of advise you how to better deal with people, emotions, situations. So that's always been an interest for me. But in terms of relationship, no, <laughs> not as yet. We never know. Coach, K, Coach KB, <laughs> I wanna, I wanna ask you, I wanna ask you a question. Huh? Yeah. Can a dating coach help you really find your soulmate? Um, a dating coach can help you identify what's a soulmate number one for you because what's a soulmate for me and other people is different. The thing is, we must shy away from standardizing relationships and love. There's no one formula 
to this thing where I say I just pet you like you you met your partner for 15 years you didn't know you had to take a chance you know but imagine if you didn't meet your partner and there was no way of you knowing um, what to look out for in terms of relationships like a lot of us grew up in broken homes that we don't know what what template is there um, for love what template is there for relationship a healthy relationship we just relationship but we don't know what template is there for a healthy relationship so i think for me where relationship comes, um, expert comes in is that they just give a clear indication of they help you identify what's a healthy relationship for you and but also depending on our childhood we can attract different traumas for example you can be a baggage data meaning that you you date with a history of, for example, uh, you bring in baggages from different relationships, or you can be. All right, so we have a bit of a, an issue there with her sound, and we're gonna hopefully bring her back if she's still online. Uh, but Aisha, I'm gonna carry on with you while Coach KB is gonna come back in. And uh, yeah, so that question also goes to you, Aisha. Do you think that a dating coach can certainly help somebody to actually find his soulmate. Look, I've never, I've never actually seeked out a dating coach specifically, but I do believe that coaches can help you figure out who you are. I think the core right. in finding your soulmate is about understanding who you are, what you want, and what you're looking for, and what you can give. Right. I feel if you don't have that understanding, there's no way for you to identify what type of partner you want and who you'd actually match with. So whether it's a life coach partner or a dating coach, I think it all starts with you. Lovely. So we, we're having difficulty reconnecting with Coach KB, but certainly she is going to be back. And I'm going to end wrapping up with a few questions. And if she comes back, those questions are going to be asked to her as well. And there you go. She is back indeed. And I'm going to bring her on the show yeah. once again. So <laughs> because I didn't want Aisha to keep to start sweating here bullets. <laughs> Really feel out of here, but Coach KB is going to help her not to sweat. Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. I think I lost you for a second. <laughs> all right. So these questions go to all of you, and we we conclude in this conversation. It's, a, it's been a beautiful conversation. I could go on and on and on. By the way, I talk for days. I talk for days and years. I can I can talk the whole year without ever stopping. And and my team always reminds me. And I'm trying to be civil with my entire audience as well. So the first, the first question I want to ask you guys is this: <clears throat> What is your biggest, your biggest failure, and what did you learn from it? Relationship-wise. Whether it's relationship-wise in your life, yes. Um, relationship-wise for me, it would be forgetting about me, putting myself last, losing my identity that was my biggest failure and it's something i quickly took count of and fortunately was able to rectify but for me that was the biggest loss okay so coach kb uh, has another technical glitch and oh, okay. uh so, yeah I, I would have loved her to to answer that question as well uh, but she's certainly going to come back uh because essentially i'm, I'm just trying to you know uh, to put a few a few questions that will certainly give yeah. guidance to to the audience right there now, Aisha, this question would have normally gone to Coach KB, but I'm going to ask you this question um, a little differently. Okay, I know that you have a you you are you have an MBA. You've made a bold decision, and I remember back in the days when you called me, you were out of Australia, but also here, you made a bold decision for you to embark. By the way, I actually wrote your recommendation letter. Jeez, about yes, your MBA. Yes, yes, <laughs> All right. <yes. laughs> um, now, but but also you have a great you know, great many 10 years expertise uh, in, with your company. So the one thing that I want to find out is what are the best resources that have helped you along the way to learn anything about what you've been able to accomplish? But also, let's talk about relationship-wise because I know that you were married once and you got divorced. I'm not going to ask you why, but I'm going to ask you exactly what are the questions, what, what are the resources along the way? It could be the people that certainly helped you uh, to to find yourself, especially that with your answer earlier on, the mistake you made was to forget about you. So, what are the things you were able to uh, uh, just just tell me what made you after that? 
what made me after that certainly number one would be family and friends just having the right people around you um, right. the right advice um it's very important to surround yourself with strong-minded people like-minded people whoopsie oh boy sorry just i'm about to also hold on two seconds go on, go on. Here you are. you're gonna have to take me off for a second <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so Aisha is having a little bit of an issue there. So it looks like her battery is about to die. And all of these beautiful ladies are just letting me down like this on this day of August. Well, you know what? Coach KB is not back yet, but um, uh, I'm going to carry on mentioning a few things. Okay, Coach KB is not going to be back. I think she's still having a few issues. Um, while Aisha is trying to get sorted out, uh, the one thing, let me just remind you guys, we, are, we have been uh, talking about relationships we have been talking about exactly about social dating and i'm going to bring aisha back on the sh uh, on this live I've so got she can six minutes that left part. john i'm so sorry <laughs> that's why that's why we carry on until you drop out so that's okay what i was saying was for me it was very important to have strong people that held me up because um right. they came to a point where i lost my identity i lost who i was I right. recognize that, but also having a young child at the time meant that I needed the extra support, not just for me, but for him, so right. that I could lean on them when I wasn't strong enough to, okay. to, to be the best version of myself. So while I got myself together, I had amazing friends, you've been one of them, my family, extremely supportive through it all. So that right. was the biggest resource for me. Until today, I still stand firm on having the right people around you. It doesn't matter whether it's in business or whether it's in relationships. It's important to surround yourself with the right people. I'm going to ask you one last question, hoping that your battery right. and laptop, uh, yeah. battery laptop is going to get you to <laughs> answer that. Uh, this is an interesting question, especially for you. I would like to know as well. Who are the three people uh, who have been the most influential to you? Oh, Don, you can't do that. <laughs> I could be one of them. You can say John. That's okay. <laughs> I'm going to get killed for this. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know three. Um, three influential people. Okay. You're definitely one. Um, John, um, geez, can't I just put family as one? <laughs> of course. I don't care. It depends on family will just go in one, one basket. Me. We'll just have family in one basket. Um, Wow, guys, this is a tough one. I have a lot of amazing people in my life. It's really hard for me to choose three. I That's really true. do. I've been That's blessed. True. I can't. Every, everybody wants to catch. I can't do that, John. <laughs> no, I'm listening. I, I, I honestly don't have three. I have such amazing people in my life okay, just, i do just, not just have them a few just name a few just name a few um john my mom my dad my siblings um okay my aunts okay yeah it's it's it's, it's been on different levels and different times there's been different people who have sure. just lended an ear or a piece of advice so there's, sure. there's no one person or three people because it's it's always yeah dependent where are you aisha on your entrepreneurial journey it's a process <laughs> it's a process. It's a process because the last yeah, uh, the last year and a half for me has more been a process of discovering myself. Yeah. So I'm still on that journey. The entrepreneurial side of me will always be there. It's still there. It's very strong, um, and it will come through. Probably start up again late this year towards next year. Um, but I've spent the last year and a half rediscovering who I am. So. Well, that's what we're here to really find the hustle, right? Yes. I'm very proud to have been a friend of yours, talking to you all the time for the last several years, <laughs> and pushing you where I can and giving you some inspirational thoughts, um, always pushing you to go beyond because I do believe you have some of the amazing talent. Um, and sometimes you don't even believe yourself, but you know what? You need to be surrounded with people who believe in you, in your abilities to succeed. And I certainly am one of that. And thank you for having me as your friend. Thank you all, guys, and thank you, Aisha, for being on the show. I know Thanks, it, John, uh, and thank you, Baby. <laughs> <laughs> I know it took you a lot to be on the show, but um, thank you once again, and thank uh, thank you to Coach KB. I know that you you had a few uh, technical glitches towards the end, but uh, you know what? Being an entrepreneur is also knowing how to maneuver around the show uh, so that you don't lose the audience and you keep them engaged uh, as we continue towards the end. So, Aisha. 
I will speak to you soon. And thank you once again and coming up to everybody else. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, so this is the end of the show. Uh, it's been an interesting show, not your typical, you know, hardcore finance and uh, business and entrepreneurship and and all like all blockchain and cryptocurrencies and all that kind of stuff. But it's been an interesting show. So um, this whole month of uh, August, we are talking to ladies. And uh, by the way, uh, the next Monday, uh, I want to bring in three, I do believe there are three phenomenal ladies. And they are married to entrepreneurs. And the reason why we are bringing them on the show is to discuss exactly about the livelihood next to the husbands who are entrepreneurs. And I suppose this is the one thing that we all forget sometimes, right? That entrepreneurship, you know, these entrepreneurs are, are so focused on what they're doing and uh, they have a family to build and they have multiple other people around them, but, um, and, and have strong support from their families, right? So I would like to hear from their experience, their expertise, what do they go through? What challenges do they have to overcome? Uh, how do it, how how do they have to, you know, to to lift up their themselves every single day, being married to these entrepreneurs who sometimes go through some of the the hardest moment in life, be it financially, emotionally, mentally, physically, whatever. But you know what? We want to be able to hear from them, ladies, and as we continue to celebrate Women's Month, I thank you all. And once again, I just want to conclude on this note with a another uh, a warning message. Uh, uh, for those of you who actually uh, listened to me at the very beginning, I started a conversation by warning all of you guys to not fall prey to anybody using my name, my pictures, impersonating me with regards to any investment possible. All right? I don't offer any investment opportunity on, a, on the internet. I do not have any Bitcoin investment opportunity for any of you guys. I don't. Yes, I don't. I am not a forex trader. No, I am not. And if you want to work with me, you need to reach out to the proper channel. We have the proper channel. We educate here on Facebook. We educate here on Twitter. We educate here on LinkedIn. We educate here on Instagram, on YouTube. That's what we do. If you want to learn with, uh, from me, that's the reason why you land on this page. All right. If you are falling prey to all of these scams, guess what? You are not being vigilant about yourself and your finances. So start being vigilant, start reorganizing exactly how you engage with people. Don't send money to anybody you don't know. Don't send money to anybody you haven't met before, you haven't spoken to, do your own research, and most importantly, stay tuned for more. I love you all and thank you for being a part of this community. And um, thanks for making this, this place a great place. We love to be here and until next, week sunday uh, well next week monday actually not next week sunday until next week i love you all and i see you soon okay keep well bye now so can blockchain be a catalyst for development in africa here is our interview with john longbella it's going to be a pretty unique show where we're talking to digital entrepreneurs and black entrepreneurs that are actually doing great things. Let it be in the marketing space, let it be in cryptocurrency. And I brought back John Lombella, uh, a good friend of mine who's uh, been playing in that space for quite a while. John Lombella, you know, go, John is the cryptocurrency guru. I call him like that. I'm an entrepreneur myself, all the way from South Africa. It is important to always develop new things, right? So ambitiously build new cases beyond just financial services. Yes, we believe in the financial services. I mean, Bitcoin, as a matter of fact, was created as a payment system. It appeared to be a cash electronic system. It all started from there, but it doesn't have to stop there.